All right, so um, let's do a sit down and talk about prostatectomy. We got Caitlin. Caitlin. Hey, hi. We got hi. Allison Gallup. Sorry, Caitlin Buck. I didn't say oh, Allison. I don't know. Her. <laughs> Allison Gallup. Just Caitlin. Just Caitlin, formerly known as Caitlin Buck. <laughs> We've got Emily Kelso, Greta Vogel, and I'm Sarah Sander. We're all treating pre and post op patients. And they're a really interesting type of patient, right? Like really mm -hmm. different from the other patients we treat. A lot of guys come in and they're like, I don't know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I have or I don't have my surgery scheduled yet. Like, <clears throat> what is the point of this? Like, what do you tell them? Well, a lot of guys actually do a lot of research before they come in. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. So some of them are already doing Kegels, but the big thing for us, I think, when we see patients for the first time is they come with the expectation that they're going to learn exercises. But I tell them that the first appointment's pretty important if we can get them in before surgery because that's where they learn a lot of information on just expectations after surgery and how to correctly do a Kegel in preparation so they have better outcomes after surgery. And not overdoing the Kegels. Like exactly. a lot of men come in and they're like, oh, I'm doing them all the time. I start, I stop my pee all the time. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you can, okay, well, I'll tell you how much I to do. I can stop my pee on right. a dime. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> like, so. That's not impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so um, teaching them how to do it correctly and in the proper. Okay, but time. so do your guys come in knowing the major side effects of this surgery? Some do, some don't. Really? Yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of times they've already seen their surgeon and surgeons are great and they yeah. are keeping them well informed on just like expectations afterwards, but sometimes they're just so overwhelmed with getting the diagnosis and all the options for what they're gonna do, if they're gonna do radiation or surgery or other procedures. So a lot of times they come in just a little bit overwhelmed, and so they you know want to get that information and yeah. are surprised at the end of our sessions yeah. just how well informed they feel yeah. with the material we give them. So Emily, what do you tell people the main symptoms are? Yeah, what do you tell them? So I tell them leakage is the main beast that we're going to be tackling, yeah. um, and and everyone leaks, and some people leak a little bit it's always a spectrum yeah you know from a little to a lot and um you know it will get better and that's the main focus is yeah that it will get better and we'll help you get there and we're going to beef up your muscles before <laughs> so i also tell them i like to tell them pre-op <clears throat> about how they will have erectile dysfunction do y'all talk about right. that yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. i think yeah. it's important to to establish that open communication with them right away because they're so nervous and they don't have somebody to talk to about it. At least that's what I've noticed is everyone just appreciates how open we are yeah. with the vulnerable things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that helps a lot, I think, going that's, forward. That's I, so true. Yeah. yeah. I touch on the emotional kind of mental aspect too. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I can't completely under, I cannot understand what mm -hmm. this feels like, but for a lot of my patients, they, come in after surgery and they say, you know, I didn't realize how mentally hard this would be. And, and so I try to prep them for that. Like, yeah. this is what I'm seeing. And yeah. um, and that also will get better over time. Just it takes it takes time. Right. And, and so. it's really helpful when, when partners or spouses come in as well, yeah. or family yeah. members, yeah, yeah, because yeah. again, the material, like they've, they've gone through a lot of options and just having somebody there also as a support for them to, right. re to remind them, being like, remember, they told you that this might happen after surgery and then they don't they don't worry so much. Mm -hmm. You bring up a really good point because um, there was a period of time, and I need to do more of this, I think, where I would say like, hey, if you can bring your partner in or someone's gonna be helping you to that first pre-op appointment, mm -hmm. that'll be really helpful. Because do you have guys, I have guys that come in and they're like, I have cancer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I found exactly. out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And nothing's they told me to come stick. here. Yeah. Nothing's sticking. Nothing's right. sticking. So I, I get patients like that. Yeah. And yeah. oftentimes when the wife does come in, she's the one asking a lot of the questions. Yes, that's yeah. true. Because they're like, and they I, I don't even know what to think right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they're right yes. Yes. list of questions. And, yeah. you know, I like to tell guys, most of the time you, you, you pre-op patients, you guys that have active prostate cancer right now, come in and you have cancer the first time I meet you and most of the time the second time you are cancer free mm -hmm. and that's not everyone right mm -hmm. but I mean it's a different perspective like a, like a hopeful way to look at it yeah. you know right. yeah. I mean so much of dealing with pre and post-op prostatectomy patients is emotional right and um, I think it just 
it just helps their quality of life to know they have someone that could, they can bounce ideas off of, they can email, mm-hmm. they can see, yeah, yeah. you know, in, in different intervals. So, um, okay, so you mentioned there's a spectrum of leakage, mm-hmm. right? And I've seen that too. Like I've seen some people who just like leak with coughing and sneezing after mm-hmm. surgery. And I'm so impressed by that, but that's not the majority. Right. Mm-hmm. Like what what do you what would you say is like what most of your patients are looking like after surgery as far as leakage goes? So some of it depends on if they're having any leakage prior. Oh that yeah. They're that's dealing true. with things beforehand. Um so we take that in consideration. Also too, it depends on what their lifestyle is like. Mm-hmm. So if there's somebody who is pretty physically fit, but they work in construction and they want to get back to work after their four weeks post op they might leak more. So we mm-hmm. talk about just expectations on, you know, what their life might be like after mm-hmm. surgery on maybe they're going to leak more if they're, you know, more physically active. Um, so, yeah, so we go over just hypotheticals on yeah. what to expect afterwards because, they, like you said, it could be a drop to nothing where they don't need any sort of liners or anything like that to where they feel like by the end of the day they've totally saturated yeah. and they're really frustrated with it. So. Yeah, I do feel like physicality helps. Yeah. So if oh, yeah. they're active, yeah. I'm like, just start yeah. walking. If and you do never start. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's the mechanical sense. pressure on the bladder if they're heavier, so they can yeah. lose weight before it'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would say that my average, if I had to give you an average, my average patient comes back after their catheter is removed Mm -hmm. and they're like i cannot believe how much i'm leaking right Mm -hmm. this is unbelievable how much i'm leaking yeah you know and so do you try to prepare your patients and say like this is what i do i'll say you will leak so much you will not believe how irritating it is like try to really wrap your head around that, yeah, and I yeah. think that like they go into it and they're like, "Oh yes, she said this would happen." Right. And if they're not, they're really yes. happy. <laughs> it is, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. For the worst, yeah. exactly. And I've had men come in when they're not necessarily leaking so much afterwards, and they're like, "I'm so glad you told me about the worst because mm-hmm. I feel so much better." Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're still yeah. leaking, but not as much as they yeah expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And yeah. I usually tell them like, night times you might be waking up more often yeah. to go mm-hmm. to the restroom, but you're staying drier at night Mm -hmm. and then maybe in the mornings you notice you're more dry but as the day progresses when you're more fatigued even though you might feel fine not fatigued your muscles are fatigued right you might leak more that's pretty Mm -hmm. common yeah Mm -hmm. that's true a lot of them say at the end of the day yeah the end of the day they'll leak more or whatever yeah yeah i also have some guys that won't feel an urge to urinate at all Mm -hmm. because their bladder bladder never fills their bladder Mm -hmm. doesn't fill it just just goes right right through through them yeah (laughs) And so, like, I'll try to warn them about that, too. You might not even have an urge. You might feel like a faucet yeah. that is not turned off, and you can't do anything mm-hmm. about it. So On the other side, though, there's people who, like, constantly have to go to the bathroom. Afterwards. That's true. So, and they're, they're very worried. So, you know, training the bladder to hold urine and yeah, mm-hmm. within reason. Yeah. But it's a whole training program afterwards for yeah. some people. So we tell them to stay hydrated. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So... Staying hydrated with water. can mean different things for <laughs> different <laughs> people. Exactly. So we have this whole talk about that, but you're talking Beer about... Beer does not count. We're Dr. talking Dr. about Dr. people having count. to go more <laughs> often so that they don't want to drink. Well, yeah. yeah. So there's several things that happen. So like they're drinking a decent amount of water, and we'll, I'm sure we're going to talk about bladder irritants, but if they're drinking a decent amount of water um, before surgery and they feel like they have to go all the time, they think, well, if I drink less, maybe I won't have to urinate as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then we have this whole conversation about... That is concentrated false. urine is also yeah, an irritant. Good. It's not going to help. Yeah. And then to your point about how to drink water correctly, yes, mm-hmm. we tell them sip it throughout the day. Don't yeah. chug a bottle because you chug a bottle now your bladder is freaked out. And yeah. Now you have to go mm-hmm. urinate. You know? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a patient ask if he could drink sixty four ounces. What one? Just, in the just morning. get it done. Oh, well, okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thirsty later? No. Try it. And your bladder will be really mad. <laughs> yeah. Not ideal. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's a good question. I think it's very practical. Yeah. It's yeah. practical. practical. Like, yeah. No, one, no one had ever asked me that. Were they an engineer? Like, um, yeah. Okay. That so, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, so y'all mentioned Kegels, but can you go into like, so we tell them what to expect, leakage, mm-hmm. erectile dysfunction, right? But we didn't really talk about erectile dysfunction that much. So what do we mean by erectile dysfunction? Do we mean like, oh, it's going to take longer to get an erection now? Or do we mean like flaccid appendage, mm-hmm. useless mm-hmm. appendage for a little bit? 
that just again attached it's, to their body. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Probably. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of guys say that they have like a, a puckered in penis or a buried penis um, for a long time. I hear turtle head. Turtle mm-hmm. head. Uh, it's like po- poking out. Mm-hmm. Um, so we start a program for that at six weeks. Um, but yeah, it can be a long road. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> a long, hard, <laughs> or not so hard. Hopefully, not winding road <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to your no door. Bend. Like, like, no bends. Um, to your physical therapy door. <laughs> uh, hopefully, no forks again. in the road. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, so, okay. Are we staying on task? Are, like, we are not totally, jumping around too much. We're, no, okay, y'all. Good. This, okay, is, okay, this good. is how my treatments go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Front to the yeah. point. Just follow, yeah. Yeah. just follow the conversation. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> so we retake. No, no, no. We're, okay. This is great. I have something off the, pro- off the erectile stuff. Yeah? So, um, well, I just Sorry, think, I was, like, really close to you. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about it. Uh, laying your shoulder talk about erectile. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think that that topic is, they're so nervous to talk about it. Yeah. And yeah. most mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. pre-surgery anyway. So you have to be up front and be That's like, true. look. It's true. It's the age, right? It's yeah. the it's age. age. Yeah, it's age. Right. I didn't know until I got into this, this specialty, like, just how common it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So I think it's great to address that right away. And, and just, and like, jumping in Just and get into yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we're they going They appreciate there. that. Yeah, do. we're going we there We went there in right three now. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and we'll keep going there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we won't stop. <laughs> exactly. So, um, okay. So now you bring up something that I think is really important. So we are women. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. We are women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, women don't have prostate. So all of these patients are men. Mm-hmm. And I get guys a lot who are like, ooh, you could be my daughter. You could be my niece. Mm-hmm. I feel, I'm sorry. I feel so inappropriate mm-hmm. telling yeah. you about my erections. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you about my bowel movements. And I'm like, no, this is <laughs> yeah. our job. They do apologize. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Lots yeah. of apologies. Yeah. It's going to be graphic. Like, I'm, I'm like, yeah. this, this is that graphic. Graphic. I've heard yeah. it. Yeah. This, this is healthcare. This every day. Right. This is our job. We're very comfortable yes. talking about it. Yes. And I and and I'm sure y'all do this, but like we bring up the questions. They're not coming right. in saying, Okay, and, and let's talk about my erectile function. Yeah. We bring it up yeah. and we we mm-hmm. are very comfortable with that because we know you have to be matter of fact. You have to be matter of fact yes. and yeah. you have to put all the information on the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, so we talked about Kegels earlier, but what I wanna ask y'all about is how specifically do we help guys improve urinary leakage and erectile issues after their surgery? Like how, how is it that physical therapy actually does this? Like how, what do you say to them? Who wants to say it? Emily wants to say it. Emily, Emily's like, yeah, I'll say it. Yeah. So I always describe the bottom of the pelvic floor, like a big plate or a bowl because uh-huh. You're they, thinking of food often. Because, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry all the time. And so they, um, because they want to know when we tell them we're going to check your muscle rectally, we're going to go through them and check your muscles. They're like, well, why are you going there? It's it's around my, my penis. Why are you checking that muscle? And so giving them that visual, like it mm-hmm. covers the whole. Front and the back. Front and the side back. Side to side. Same muscle. Mm-hmm. Conveniently, we can check it. Conveniently re- located. Rectally. <laughs> right here. Um, no, I don't say that. But, um, but so I tell them, you know, those muscles help with controlling your urinary leakage. And in a normal state, you don't have to worry about it. But after the surgery, there's a lot going on and there's, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, they I, need to be retrained. I tell them it's, it's not like getting your prostate examined. It's right. just beyond the anal sphincter. It's easily accessible. It's, it's I tell them it's a, called the puborectalis, mm-hmm. the muscle that wraps around the rectum. Right. If you engage that, you, we're recruiting all the muscles. And I say the biggest thing to get from your pre-op appointment is knowing that you're doing them correctly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you check to make sure how strong they are, yeah. how well you can hold the muscle, how quickly you can turn them on and off to look for your coordination. And then we give them a specific program that they do every day until the day of surgery. And the morning of surgery, they wake up, they go have surgery, they don't have to worry about their Kegels until the catheter comes out. So typically, mm-hmm. that's how we do it, because um, it's just too uncomfortable. But I think that's the biggest thing for them to come out of the pre-op appointment with, is that information like, I know I'm doing a Kegel correctly, because after surgery, it's more challenging for us. We can't really test the strength until right. like certain weeks out from surgery, yeah. mm-hmm. but then they can do it 
well and they can do mm-hmm. it regularly and, mm-hmm. and know that and be confident with the fact it's that they know how to do it. And it they is. have the tools yeah. and yes. yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're always like, yeah. oh, that wasn't as bad mm-hmm. once yeah. we're done. We oh, I tell people, yeah. you're about to get the most pleasant rectal exam you've ever <laughs> had. <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked them afterwards, was I right? And they're like, okay. Yeah, yeah you were right. <laughs> so, okay, so we use our fingers to decide, you know, what their power and endurance and coordination is like when we check their muscles. Right. How many times do you have people ask you about biofeedback? Mm, not very often. Maybe like once a month. Yeah? Maybe yeah. once every two months, not that often. Yeah. So we don't have biofeedback. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do our patients get better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. so like we made the choice as a department that like we don't need to use biofeedback, we right. use our fingers and that mm-hmm. is awesome. And the reason we don't use biofeedback a lot of the time, I feel is because you can get a lot of errors with biofeedback and mm-hmm. waste a lot of time with biofeedback. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. we just get the information yeah. we need. I had one patient who had a prostatectomy years ago mm-hmm. and was given a unit to use at home. Oh. And he actually came in clinic wanting to a refresher. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, you're relying on the machine I want you to learn how to do it yourself. Yeah, that's and true. He Why did you need to yeah. leave? He did over and over. amazing. Uh. He was really pleasantly ha- like he was happy, and the idea of not having to have a foreign object to help him do his yeah. kegels yeah. was really helpful yeah. for him. Yeah. And yeah. then he, you know, he didn't have to rely on a machine. You can do it easily. Himself. Just yeah. use the wrong muscles, and it still that's true. shows. Yeah, the data. shows makes yeah. it look right. like you're doing yeah. it correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean. And it's not to bash biofeedback altogether. I mean, it has its role for certain types of patients, or it can be beneficial, but it is not necessary. No. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. not necessary. Well, and a lot of it for when we do the exam is some of them use compensatory muscles, mm-hmm. and so it's us coaching them to turn those off and use the yeah, proper ones. And we can ones. see that mm-hmm. and different right. yeah. see cues, verbal cues, mm-hmm. yeah. and that mm-hmm. works fine. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. So, what do you what do you think about patients uh, urinating and stopping their flow? There's a lot of literature right. out. I've had patients yeah. tell me, oh, on the Johns Hopkins yep. website, it says to start and stop. These are the ones that come My in with flow. the research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Try it. yeah. So, I mean, I say, this is what I say, one time ever, maybe, and then hard stop, then you don't do yeah. it again because yeah. you don't want, when right. your bladder's emptying, you want to let Just your let bladder out, empty. Yeah. Yeah. We give you the exercises mm-hmm. to be done mm-hmm. in a certain way, in a certain way. Because it's so. true. That is yeah. a Kegel when you stop your urine flow. It yeah. is. Yeah. You right. saw you could do it. Now you don't you need to do it again. Yeah. yeah. Right. It'll you did it. And you're seeing us. We're telling you you're doing it, right? Because right. yeah. we are putting our finger in your rectum. Right. We yeah. know. <laughs> we we know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, why, like, why do you think people leak after surgery? Why are they leaking? I just tell people it's like, you just had a major trauma. Yeah. Surgery is always surgery. trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those muscles like turn off. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like when you have a knee replacement. I was just about yeah. To say, coming from an orthopedic world, any, other, yeah. Girl, yeah. any yeah. surgery, the muscles kind of go Around on vacation. It turn off. Yeah. They don't yeah. they get a little upset. They're yeah. like, I'm just gonna you stretch take a break. Me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a not little talking to you anymore. <laughs> so sometimes like patients will say it hurts to sit on mm-hmm. the bottom of my pelvis. Like, well, because those muscles are like sore and swollen. Yeah. And yeah, you're going to have inflammation. Yeah. So things are going to take some time to settle down yeah. and mm-hmm. get working right again. Yeah. 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 I always think that's really interesting. And I always compare it with knee replacements. I'm like, well, no, do you have to like turn your quads on again yeah. afterwards? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Inhibition. Yeah. 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 Inhibition. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, my probably one of my favorite things to talk to guys about is food and drink because Mm -hmm. I love the patient that comes in and is like oh yeah I'm super hydrated I drink two dozen peppers (laughs) three lemonades iced tea with every meal Mm -hmm. two coffees 16 ounces each so that's 32 ounces and I'm drinking Topo Chico all day and my urine's clear and my urine is clear I don't know how but my urine's clear I'm super hydrated and I'm like Awesome, because I feel like that's a slam dunk. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, easy. let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is easy. It's a hard conversation to have. 
because there's a lot of things people love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think there's false advertisement oh. with like all the liqueurs and stuff. So yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I did have a patient who, who was totally. drinking only coffee all day long. Mm-hmm. Was and, it me? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, well, maybe you should try tipping it, tip the scale towards yeah. water by the time you have surgery. Because he was like a month out, okay, just so yeah. he would cut back on his... Yeah love of the coffee because yeah. some yeah. people become very dependent Not on a it. harsh switch well after yeah. surgery he came very upset with me oh, no. because felt really bad headaches was just not feeling good mm-hmm. i said you know what go ahead and drink your coffee <laughs> yeah. but don't forget about your water so drink it's coffee also... before your appointment with yeah. 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 yeah so yeah i mean it's it's all about you know balance too so mm-hmm. i you know we yeah. talk about bladder irritants and i said could be something on this list could right. be nothing on this list could okay. be everything on this list so greta mm-hmm. what is a bladder irritant everything we love everything so, we love yep so Foods and liquids that are high in acid, really. Um, anything from your beer, your wine, your coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, those sparkling waters that have flavors in them. It's full of ingredients that will irritate your bladder and make you go more often. Yep. I have this conversation with my mom all the time. Uh-huh. It fires me up. La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She loves her sparkling beverages. And, you know, you just got to talk about flat water and how yeah. important that is. Yeah, because yeah, that's the thing, too. I've learned, I, I have to say, how much flat, mm-hmm. unflavored water are you drinking? Because if yeah. I say water, the, some people include LaCroix, and LaCroix is not water. Well, water with lemon. Mm-hmm. Water, water with water lemon is, is not water. Right. Mm-hmm. It's water with lemon. Yeah. yeah. You know, I yeah. think it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, one of my good friends was like, I'm so hydrated. I drink Cappuccino all day. And I was like, <laughs> she's like, I'm urinating all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, girl, no kidding. <laughs> girl, <laughs> that's not bottle. water. Yeah. It's got 15 milligrams of salt in it's it. It's like too hydrating. It's soup, the most mm-hmm. carbonated yeah. beverage you could yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. But this is what I tell people. The least irritating alcohol is vodka and water. Mm. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, if, you have, if you're going to have a drink, you know. <laughs> so so bladder irritants, like, but do they cause damage? They, do, they don't. They're just going to interfere with your life. Right. Yeah. You're just right. going to go to the bathroom a lot. Or leak a lot. Or, yeah. leak, or leak a lot. Or leak a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Or up right. at night. It's or, a quality yeah. of life yeah, It is a exactly. quality of life. That's How do you exactly. want this day to go? Right. Yeah. So if you get massive headaches. headaches. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you get massive headaches because you're cutting out your coffee. Yeah. And, you know, you have yeah. to find balance. Is it know, it might take longer. That's a yeah. great point, though, to be like, look, this isn't going to hurt you. Yeah. But you just have to be aware of if you have like a really wet day, what'd you do the night before? Yeah, right, or you yeah. can kind of like tie it back to And it's not your diet. forever. It's That's not the forever. other thing. They think like, oh my gosh, I have to cut this out For forever. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they're like once you feel you have more control, start playing with the mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. bladder irritant list yeah. and see, test it out. See yeah. what happens. But it's also spicy food, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And we have we're in Texas, so there's so much Tex Mex yeah. and spicy yes. food and margaritas. Salsa. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. so the salsa, that'll do it. But then there's weird things like Chocolate. Milk, yeah. chocolate, yeah, chocolate dairy, stuff that yeah. seems a bit more basic, which mm-hmm. can still irritate the bladder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had one just say nothing on the list except his wife put a lot of salt in all of his food, oh. and that did it because he was retaining a lot yeah. of water. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't anything uh. spicy or any of those typical irritants. It's because it I just... figure that out. Yeah, you know, he they are usually it. pretty they're aware. Really aware. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially when they start, they're they're like, they start paying attention. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a good point because. You're bringing up a good point because um, I like to like tell people about the bladder irritants and I give them a list and I'll say like, I want you to be aware of this because Mm -hmm. you might feel like you're getting drier and drier and then you have a super wet day and you don't know why you were so wet Mm -hmm. and that is so disappointing. Mm -hmm. But if you can pinpoint it to, Mm -hmm. oh, I had like orange juice and I had um, lots of vinaigrette on my salad and I had red wine, then Yes, yeah. that makes sense then. Mm-hmm. It's just got to make sense, you know? Yeah. There's lots of leakage, potentially, mm-hmm. most likely. That's so, good. Caitlin, <laughs> you talk about continence protection, like what sort of padding people can wear yeah. before surgery, or you tell them after surgery? No, for sure before. Okay. Um, That's what I do. I tell them there it depends, like the, the briefs, the adult briefs. They call them diapers. Some men call they them do. diapers, I don't but like I say don't disposable diapers. underwear. I don't like I say, I don't like say, I say, I say disposable yeah. underwear. I say <laughs> that's padding that's undergarments. Yeah. Yeah. It's a euphemism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of men say they're really comfortable, so mm-hmm. they like those. And they like to sleep in them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are pads, yeah. different 
like strength or thickness of pads for absorption. Um, and some men put the pads in the depends to make it easier. I like that because yeah. you don't want to take your pants off to change yeah. the depends yeah. or the depends like brands. Mm-hmm. So there's also shields, right. and a patient told me about that, and I was like, "What's a shield?" And so I went <laughs> to AGB or wherever, yeah. and I looked Design at the leakage mm-hmm. protection mm-hmm. because it yeah. does, it's different. And so when they're more continent, but they need a little something like a little liner, it's sort of like yeah. a. Right. a but it's shield. more anterior. It's more anterior. Yeah. I like it's kind of word. triangular. Yeah. I like the word yeah. shield because mm-hmm. it reminds you of protection. Yeah. yeah. They should start marketing like female urinary and con and stuff as like she Yeah. And <laughs> Wonder Woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, would take off. More, <laughs> that would be totally more marketable. Kick off. Yeah, yeah. Instead of pad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so talking about women which you would not expect when we're talking about prostatectomy. Women are not involved other than us in the room. But <laughs> women will sometimes give their husbands their pets yeah. or they'll go buy yeah. pets. Mm-hmm. But the pads for menstruation, for blood, are not the same protection um, as pads for urinary leakage. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I forget to tell men that a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And I need to be better about that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I tell I tell them, go to the aisle, like an HEV or CVS, there's a whole incontinence protection aisle. And there's a woman's side and a men's side. Oh, because yeah. I had a man, totally. I guess he accidentally got women's liners or something. And he was like, it was a horrible, horrible mistake. Oh, no. I was like, okay, well, look in the men's section. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they don't even know. Most of these guys have never even gone to the store and looked on this aisle. Right. So, some of them are ordering off Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 In bulk. You can order in in bulk. bulk. Yes, it's true. <laughs> it's yeah. easier. And then they keep wearing them because they're like, well, I have, well, I have them. I don't want to waste yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then they don't never really them. know yeah. if how much control they have. So towards the end, I usually say, okay, now it's time to start mm. weaning off. Yeah. Like in the morning, if you're not going anywhere, yes. mornings you're usually drier. At night, you're usually drier. You've been dry for like a week. All right. Get rid of them. Yeah. 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 But then they, they can know. be donated. Yeah. yeah. Or just bring them to us and we'll give them. That's true too. Yeah. 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 I had a man say yeah. he'll bring them into me. That's he awesome. hasn't yet though. So, <laughs> how many of you put your business cards in the urinary incontinence protection aisle? Oh my gosh, do you do that? No, <laughs> but I, I like, should. That is such a good idea. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> or like in the bathroom <laughs> at places. Have you been here a lot today? <laughs> they can just like take your card so and silly. like behind the stall. Yeah. I can help yeah. you. <laughs> Marketing I can see ideas. You doing that actually. Um, oh okay, God. so okay, so we talked about the penis. Let's talk about the penis again, okay? Because penises are very important to men, I hear. Mm-hmm. Um, after surgery, the penis is a little bit shorter, and sometimes I have men say, "My penis is shorter. What's going on?" Right. Um, do y'all warn your men about that, your patients? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how much shorter are we talking about? variable yeah sometimes they don't notice much sometimes they feel like they can't even find it anymore. yeah yeah is it permanent though Mm-mm. it's not so here's the thing here's what I've noticed I have had patients come in like 20 years after a prostatectomy and they never got pre or post-op care because 20 years ago no one did that and honestly right now like not everyone does that yeah um he was just dribbling he wasn't leaking. He was dribbling mm-hmm. down his scrotum. Right. And, um, you know, we were able to help with that because we did a lot of hands-on work to help stretch the it. tissue. Mm-hmm. And it's a game changer. That's not urinary leakage. That's just a... It's that's you getting f- in the way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I have men where I have to find the penis. And that is... It's like, where's Waldo? Buried penis is a really... <laughs> little problem that we can make a bigger problem and fix. Um, that was supposed to be a pun or a joke. <laughs> I like it. Okay. It was okay. It was good. Um, but it, it can really be helped. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like a really, like, it's a huge quality of life issue. Yeah. You oh, know? for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so we address that at six weeks after surgery. Typically. You do good yeah. because this person was 20 years after surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our typical thing is around six weeks. When we know everything's well healed, we will start with an erectile recovery program. Yeah. That includes like stretching options for them with some doctors will say like try the VED pump, which is a vacuum erectile dysfunction pump. 
um, that can help with elongating the fascia, stretching the muscle, getting blood flow, because she likes good blood flows. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So is that to get them back to erections, or is that to get their penis longer for aesthetic reasons, but also so they don't dribble on their own scrotum? Both. Yeah. Both? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then what are you doing to have them slowly return to improving erectile function for sexual purposes or for masturbation purposes? Masturbation homework. Masturbation right? homework. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're always a little surprised when we recommend that. Yeah. Masturbation <laughs> homework. They're like, what's yep. self-stimulation? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. You, you say that is a euphemism <laughs> for masturbation. Self-stimulation. Right. Yep. We can give that or we can do penis pulls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is a penis pull? A penis pull is an exercise uh, where we instruct them to grab like the base of their penis mm -hmm. and pull in three different directions for about 45 seconds, three times each way. I'm um, just trying to help simulate the tissue and stretch everything just out. Help stretch it out. Stretch it out. So, okay. Are you giving self-stimulation or masturbation homework for men who are not interested in having sex, um, are maybe single, or are you still giving it to all of your men? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's good helps for the tissue. Healing. Helps with the yeah. nerves. It's mm -hmm. the nerves coming back. Okay. Blood flow. Mm -hmm. So you're giving it even if they're like, "Hey, I'm doing this, this self stimulation, the masturbation homework, mm -hmm. but nothing's happening." Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Can they actually orgasm without an erection? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And is anything <laughs> going to come out? Wait. I'm totally, this is totally a loaded question. Wait, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, puns, puns. puns. Ay, puns. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, it's a loaded question. They're not necessarily always going to have, like, stuff come out when they ejaculate, right? right. Yeah, but right. sometimes they will have the urine come out. Mm -hmm. And that can yes. be distressing. For and that can be yeah. distressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, I feel like sometimes we can help that, but sometimes we can't, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do y'all, what, what do y'all see when it comes to that? I think it's important to encourage that that is normal. And it's certain, not unusual. It's not unusual. It's not, right. It's, yeah, terrible. It's just. But I can also see how it would be kind of. Yeah. It would kind of turn you off to do it. Mood killer. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can be. Yep. Yeah. 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 It can be. Mm -hmm. But like one thing I've noticed is when I tell men, like, I want you to self-stimulate. It's not about what it looks like. It's mm -hmm. not. It's the. It's about like improving your nervous system, like enhancing this. Um, enhancing the blood flow as best you can, and you can orgasm without an erection. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that is, like, probably a really happy thing to hear, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I've actually had a patient who said he's having the best sex life mm -hmm. now after surgery because he's what? learning. He and his wife are learning. Oh, oh like, yeah. It opens the lines of it. Again, another yeah. reason yes. why it's great when spouses come to yeah. appointments yes. because yeah. they are also involved. This is a relationship, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's important for them to feel like they can help because yeah. it can be very beneficial for couples, too, right. to be involved in treatment. Yeah. So, yeah. There, so basically what I think I'm hearing is that this guy's – uh, definition of sex has changed mm -hmm. and like his perception of sex is not solely about penetration but yeah. it's about the whole experience, the whole experience. Yeah. all your senses that's exactly right. that's yeah. really interesting that's yeah. good mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so okay at urology Austin we have a lot of doctors that do prostatectomies we got some docs that do the da Vinci mm -hmm. we got some docs that do open um, I can't keep their physical restrictions straight Mm. Yeah, it's a lot to keep track of. It's a lot. Well, yeah, it is. Some have a five-pound weightlifting restriction. Maybe. Maybe I'm making that up. Some or go to 20. Or, yeah, yeah. 20. You know, but there's 25. a range. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell patients to just ask their doctor, like, what is my weightlifting right. restriction? Right. Yeah. And adhere to that. Yes. Yeah. And then what other restrictions do people have, like, right after surgery? Like, no uh, riding on a saddle, like a bike yeah. or a motorcycle. Or a horse. Or a yeah. horse. <laughs> or, like, men who do or riding human. lawnmowers. Yes. Mm -hmm. They say lay off that for a little bit. The splits? The splits. Yeah. No you know, I have a lot of men who like to do the splits. And <laughs> even, even, like, those that have land and they're out on tractors or even yeah. on their truck, like, bouncing around. Yeah. Nothing vibratory. Yeah, anything that's yeah. going to kind of jostle them mm -hmm. around, climbing up on construction equipment. Like, all this stuff needs to be laid low for, like, four yeah. weeks. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. Um, golfers. I mean, that's a big one. 
are Wait, golfers. golfers, they can't golf? They are. They should restrict how much they golf for four to six weeks, depending on what the doctor says. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't I know. usually tell golfers, yeah. like, if you, once you're cleared, like at four weeks, you can start mm -hmm. going out, doing some, like, chipping. If you're going to do some stuff, do it from the tee so you don't hit the curve. Is it the pressure? It's or the, is it the it golf cart? Well, <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> it's the rotation. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of interabdominal pressure. Oh, I did not so know this. So long drives especially, I usually, huh. that's, like, the last mm -hmm. thing I have them return yeah. to. And I, I tell them, like, if, the, if your buddies make fun of you from chipping from a tee, say, yep, sorry, PT orders, and put your ball on a tee and just chip from there. So yeah. that way you don't hit the earth, too. So, yeah, because that yeah. does, it's a lot of rotation mm -hmm. through the trunk, and it's a lot of interabdominal pressure. Oh, so, so. And just keep in mind, the doctors, they mess with the plumbing, so don't yeah. mess up their work. Yeah. They yeah. don't want to be tugging and pulling heel. internally yeah. too much. No. no that and you might leak. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, I also tell them, like you said, it's variable on weight restrictions. Yeah. So I usually say, you know, especially for for men that have to return to work and they travel a lot, uh -huh. you be really careful with the luggage, putting oh, the luggage sure. and overhead oh, bins. Man. Oh, man, I don't even yeah. think yeah. about this. Yeah, that's yeah. True. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Have um, <laughs> so, yeah, or check the bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's a true. good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> so, okay, Emily. Once your guys, how how often are you seeing men after surgery? Like like if if you had to give an average, I see them about this many visits for about this time frame. Yeah, five to six visits over you know a few months maybe. Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just depends, and I tell them this, and I might need to see them usually every other week, one to two times a month. So okay. yeah, just it depends on all the factors it depends on their symptoms it depends on how they're recovering yeah. and yeah so all of that so um i will say with confidence that my post-op prostatectomy patients are some of my most grateful and um thankful patients do you all have the same experience yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and why why do you yeah. think that is I think we help them feel less alone going through this because mm -hmm. it's a big life change, at least temporarily. Yeah. Um, and they a lot of them get sick of talking about their urine to their wife, or their <laughs> partner. They're always yeah. like, this is all I talk about. And yeah. it's, it gets annoying. Mm -hmm. Like, they just want to have a normal life. So yeah. getting reassurance and about just have, being a sounding yeah. board for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're their pelvic floor coach. Pelvic yeah. 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 So we kind of coach them through this journey after surgery. Yeah. They see more of us than they do of the surgeons because we spend more time with them mm -hmm. and we're seeing them more regular, you know, for adjusting their home programs. So um, we also can provide them with reassurance mm -hmm. on their process. They get, they get emotional sometimes. Oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, patients cry and say, you know, it's made this really comfortable for me and um, mm -hmm. I feel so much better. And mm -hmm. it's very, I mean, it means a lot, but it's yeah. also like, it's a huge quality of yeah. life adjustment to mm -hmm. have someone go through that with you and say like I've treated a lot of people who have gone through this mm -hmm. and yeah. and so I'm very familiar with everything yeah. you're mm -hmm. saying yeah yeah I yeah. had one patient the other day say the most important thing you told me was the power of the breath oh and so we talked about diaphragmatic breathing because after surgery he's he had a lot of urgency he was uh -huh. having a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. and we just talked about diaphragmatic breathing, breathing. and he came back the next time he was like that was probably the biggest thing you've taught me and I tell everybody about it. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was so thankful. Uh -huh. That's sweet. That's awesome. Well, um, so in order to see one of us, we like a prescription from a doctor mm -hmm. and um, we do take insurance mm -hmm. and we get these patients in like that. Mm -hmm. We may have a wait list for other things, but pre and post op is pretty <laughs> important. There pretty is. important, so yeah. we get them in pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I even think it's worth it. Like maybe if Caitlin has an opening at a location, but like Greta's location is booked, but more convenient. Like just to get started, yeah, mm -hmm. on the path, mm -hmm. and then mosey on over to Greta yeah. later down the road. You know, like we all treat extremely similarly yeah, and have the same sense of humor which is extremely important <laughs> um so I, know, I think that's important too what what is there anything else that you think that's important that we haven't covered bowels poo poo poop 
Yeah. Allie wants to talk about poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a four year old and two year old. Okay. Home. Yeah. Um, no, it's important because that's something too. After surgery, we do encourage people to not have to strain. Mm-hmm. So yeah. one of the things that um, we talk about is what their current before surgery, yes. what their current um, bowel movements are like. Because if they have a history of hemorrhoids or constipation or straining to evacuate stool, those are things we need to make sure we warn them about after yeah. surgery because we don't want the straining. Yeah. We want stool to stay soft. That's where water is really important. We're doing things like stool softeners. A lot of times we'll give them cloys and other options you know, after mm-hmm. surgery just to keep the stool soft. Yeah. Um, and even positional things that they can try to do to help evacuate stool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's important for them to know after surgery yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do you think, MLA? What else is important that you don't think we've tapped on? Um, I remember Dr. Giesler talking about how not a lot of people address the emotional, psycho, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, psychological aspect and kind of maybe touched on that or we did a little mm-hmm. bit, but it's, I think I try to bring it up mm-hmm. um, in, a, in as best of a way that I can, mm-hmm. which is that you know this might make you feel a certain way just based off of what patients say and mm-hmm. it's, emotionally can be uh, you know heavy and and well, so yeah they're yeah. like they have a cancer diagnosis which yeah. is heavy enough yeah and, and then true. like their life can be like potty yeah. training yeah essentially yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. um yeah so to just encourage being patient yeah super patient yeah. time mm-hmm. is a component mm-hmm. and time forgiving is definitely a factor. yeah factor absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. the yeah. other thing um is a lot of men will come in and be like, well, my buddy went through this and he got dry at this yeah. month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or my brother. Or my brother or my yeah. uncle or yeah. some, mm-hmm. whoever. And yeah, I'm you like, have to say, you can't. no Everybody's story is different. the same. Like, yeah. I'm, like yeah. you can tell yeah. your stories, but. And also what they read online up. is going to be the extreme. It's going to be yeah. the people that are like, oh, I never leaked a one drop. They're of course going to get, you know, they're going to want to like. Brag they about brag it. about it, yeah. yeah. And then there were the ones that are really like, oh my gosh, it was terrible. I want to let everybody know. Like, you're going to yeah. see a wide range too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't compare yourself to anybody else. Everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. body is different. Well, yeah. encouraging them to find a group yeah. or support group mm-hmm. to encourage yeah. other people to talk to so that it's not just one person yeah. and they yeah. don't feel alone. And, yeah. yeah. But take it all with a grain of salt. Absolutely. And, and then the other thing I think that most recently I, I've just never really impressed upon patients enough is we talked about this for a second, but like the power of losing weight if you are overweight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... I'm so impressed with the patients who are losing weight and the yeah. extreme change in their urinary leakage afterwards yeah. is so um, shocking to me. Yeah. And so that's a hard conversation to say to someone, you're gonna need to lose a little bit of weight. That's not how I'd say it, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, but um, losing weight, starting some sort of weight loss program before or yeah. after yeah. is so helpful, mm-hmm. especially yeah. if you feel like, why am I still leaking this much out? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And sometimes we see people four weeks before surgery, and sometimes we see them the day before surgery. That's true. So, you know, everybody's different too, but yeah. That's true. So, yeah. but I think just also to them knowing, even if it's a day before surgery, that they can do the Kegels and just the expectations after surgery is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Well, this was awesome. I learned a lot. <laughs> I geeked out. I freaked we all out. Geeked out. <laughs> And now I'm going to sneak out. (laughs) High five. I love it. High five. Go team. Yes. I can't reach. My blazer will break. (laughs) Yeah.